live and now we on another live we just live is yes, what i think is. it is that's right all that's right good. We got Christmas gifts here. This is our Christmas show right here at the WBEA. We got a couple of people that's out here in the audience. Give it up for yourselves. Yes. That we're going to be joining us. That we're going to be interviewing. This is our second time here. And the first time we had, you had some great results from Up Social from the first time. Tell us about it. Yes, I did. I probably had about 25 to 30 women show up at my next coffee chat. Um, that came to the, my coffee chat that following um, month, um, or that month. And so we got a chance to start working with women to help them build those disruptive business models, start having conversations about how do they go to that next level, um, and, and just being able to interact with small businesses. So it has been wonderful. Um, people call and asking, what's up, up, uh, social? up social? Up yeah. social. And how do I become a part of that? So we're going to be doing this. I know last m month was our first start kickoff. Yes. But we're going to be doing this every first Wednesday. Yes. And we're doing this not for any other reason but to spotlight small businesses that are in, in the marketplace, in the community, to get their name out, their brand out, their product out. That's what they do. We want to support you. We want to uplift what you're doing in the community. And we want to make sure that that there's a, um, a platform for you to be able to, to share. So I enjoyed uh, last, um, last month, and I'm looking forward to 2020 uh, being a place where women can come, men and women can come, and talk about what they're doing to help mm -hmm. the economy. Absolutely, absolutely. Now you have something that, that, that you're uh, going to be speaking on. We just talked about it. At, I got this Guinness World Record event that's going on January 18th. You're going to be one of the featured speakers. Tell us what your speech is about. It's uh, the title of my speech is going to be about everything woman. So we're going to be having a conversation about everything that impacts, empowers, change women. Okay. And so it, it's going to be a, a welcome dialogue of conversation. And so I'm looking forward to that. And it's going to be something that I will be doing with my daughter, who uh, has relocated back here to Houston. And so that's going to be our new 2020, is how do we put, how do we start engaging women in that conversation? And what does that look like? Right. Now, you're the perfect person to do this because you are running the WBEA, WBC. So tell us what you guys do here. The Women's um, Business Enterprise Alliance um, answered a grant about eight years ago with the Small Business Administration. And um, out of that came the birth of the Women's Business Center here in Houston. That mm. is 116 centers throughout the United States. And we all are charged with helping women. Our focus, our main focus is helping women uh, of all backgrounds be able to build disruptive models and also to network, um, access to opportunity. We also help with certification, building business disruptive models, one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling, and a host of trainings throughout the year that are either free or low cost <laughs> to help women develop. So we are funded by the Small Business Administration through a cooperative agreement. Our partner resources, um, are the SBDC and SCORE as well. Mm. We're all funded by the Small Business um, Administration and we're all given a charge. And mine is, is I'm blessed to be able to put a focus on women businesses. Mm. Got you, got you. Now, with this event that's coming, you're gonna get a Guinness World Record Certificate of Participation, right? Wow. We're gonna have 300 people at each location, so you're gonna be doing that. We're videoing it and we're streaming it live and you have the opportunity to win $10,000. Love to see what you think about as far as this being so big and literally could magnify your business and put you on a big platform for your people. So, you know, talk about an opportunity like that for somebody that's just coming into the WBEA, trying to get started, trying to find their marketing footing and all of that good stuff. 70% of the small businesses that come in to see us are startups. And I'm gonna say 25% of those are nonprofits. 
Mm. One of the challenges that nonprofits have, especially from a startup um, capacity, is that they don't have enough resources or data to be able to go and knock on the doors and apply for grants. And what, uh, it, what allows you to get funded is to have that history. What, do you, what are you doing in the community? How are you helping? What problem or challenges you've seen in the, in, in the, uh, in the community? And how, are your biz, how, how will your nonprofit rectify that, fix that? So that's the first thing. And then how do you get those dollars? Because for profit and nonprofit, it still takes money to be able to move your company along. And so for businesses to get that, that cash injection of $10,000, mm -hmm. it it's the difference between them being able to launch and, and, and stay afloat and be able to put some real programs in place and start working on how do I get in front of other individuals or philanthropists that will, will give to my organization based on my business plan and the mission of my organization. So this $10,000 is, is critical mm -hmm. to some businesses, especially the startup nonprofits. So I applaud you for thinking about nonprofits because their missions are so great so grand and it helps the need uh, in a community, but a lot of times they can't get that startup capital. Right. Because they don't have a source of one, how do they repay back a loan so they can't go apply for a loan if you're a nonprofit and you don't have any clientele or revenues coming in. So this gets them to uh, start planning to just focus on how do I plan to build a nonprofit that is sustainable. Mm -hmm. and, and you give them some working capital to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is wonderful. Now, you guys are always having big things going on, and I know the beginning of the year, a lot of things are popping off. What are you guys doing, uh, WBA, WBEA, WBC? What do you guys got coming up as far as events or galas? I, like, I feel like last time I was done up real nice. I was at one of your events. Uh, so yeah, one of the things that the WBEA, my host agency, I talked about funded by being funded by the Small Business Administration. The other portion of my funding come from my host agency, which is the Women Business Enterprise Alliance, mm -hmm. which is a third party uh, certification program uh, for WeBank. And WeBank is the largest certifying agency for women business enterprise. So if you're looking to get certified to do business with the private sector, which is your oil and gas, your energy, your large retailers, your large large um, uh, accounting firms, or law firms that have has been set aside for women businesses, or the federal government, which is the largest purchaser in the world, um, we certify. We certify for WBE. Then um, we'll also certify Wolsby. We're third party, third party approved to uh, certify for Wolsby, woman-owned small business. If you want to do business with the federal government. Last year, the federal government spent $500 billion, and $105 million of that was for women and veteran businesses. So it's a great pool, a great opportunity for mm -hmm. you to grow your, uh, your revenue uh, stream. Uh, and we also uh, certify for HUB. So you get three for the price of one. Once we get you certified, then we, send, we can fast track you with the city of Houston. So there's a great opportunity and a good reason to come to the Women's Business Center and every first Friday, except for this Friday, we usually have, we will have a, a certification. Why certification, why WBE certification and how do you get certified as a WBE? This week, this month, it'll be uh, December 13th from um, one to three here at the Women's Business Center, which is at 9800 Northwest Freeway Suite 120 and to register for that class it's a free class go to our website which is www.womenbusinessenterprisealliance i'm sorry it's www.wbea-texas spelled out dot org that's www.wbea-texas dot org and you can register to come to any of our events okay all right so we're going to start talking to some people is there anything else you want to say or or yeah and, and also put on your calendars every fourth Friday. If you are a startup business owner, or if you're an existing business but didn't take the time to build a business model, please start coming to our coffee chat. Our coffee chat is every fourth Friday of the month from 9 to 12. 
and it gives you the floor to be able to ask any question. We have a, a checklist that I've noticed now people are calling from around the city trying to get copies of my checklist that do one-on-one -on -one counseling for small businesses. So come to that. That is where we began to start working with you on building that disruptive model and making sure that you're going through the proper channels of getting that business set up and you're not spending any unnecessary dollars. So we have that. And we also, if you are looking to start a business, you want to set up an LLC. We have attorney Shakitha Davis and she does our lab, our formation lab. And when you walk out of here, all the questions, any questions you might have about your LLC, your operating agreement, and when you walk out from that training, you will walk out at, with your formation structure set up and legal counsel, and you can get it all done here. So she has that every um, every third every third um, Thursday. So please come to that, or you can go to our website and look at to make sure. But it's every it's, I'm sorry, it's every third yeah Thursday. Okay, okay, all right. Well, you know what? Since last time I was here. I do know a couple of the people here now. Okay. So last time you were introducing everybody to me, <laughs> but right now I'm gonna start calling people to the stage. Well, thank you. And first and foremost, I wanna call a guy that I just saw last night. Now I saw you last night too, at yes. the Toys for Tots or? It was, uh, we, are, we had our toy drive. So toy drive. So the WBEA is one of their signature events they have every year. So it was their social, uh, social um, gala. Um, where it's a chance for April Day, the president of the organization, to uh, thank all of her supporters as well as her WBEs. And so we had an event last night, but it's an also, uh, a opportunity for us to give back. <coughs> and so it was our toy drive. And we have a toy drive every year to help um, families who you know, may have fallen on hard times. And we all go through that. Absolutely. Big shout out to April Day. Did see her yesterday and her mom. Met her mom yesterday. The oh, food yes. was fabulous. I think I won the um, the uh, the scavenger hunt. I think I won. But y'all didn't give it's no, my prize did. right over here. Where's you my? You did not win. Are you sure? I'm positive. I know I put all the right answers down. I knew they were right. But you could Why would I put down wrong answers? You Who just does that? Couldn't make up your answers. Which you couldn't. No. <laughs> I'm going to be talking to management after this. But uh, so what I want to do is I want to call to the stage, first and foremost, the only other male that's in here beside my guy, Trey. Trey is always with me. But ladies Yay, and gentlemen, Trey. give it up for Michael B. Spot. Come on. Yay. Come on up here. I, he, he tried to outdress me today. I, I, I told him I, 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 I would have uh, wore bow ties. Well. I can get fancy schmancy. What's up, Michael? What's happening, man? I'm, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. So you know what? We were talking yesterday. Okay. I was on, big shout out to Mark Davenport yes. from Straight to the Top. I was on that show yesterday, had a great time. Big shout out to Fred McKnight. He was there, you were there, and the other lady, what's her name? Miss Moretta Willis. Morella, Moretta Willis, big shout out to all of them. We had a great time talking about business. Uh, coming up with ideas and literally doing some collaborative, creating some collaborative efforts right then and there on the spot. Yes. But you do a couple of different things. I know you have a barber shop. I probably need to go. I ain't had a chance to cut my hair. Both of us. I'm going this afternoon. You want to go with Man, me? Man, I'm, I'm like, dude, you know what? <laughs> I get your VIP seat. You can get right in and dude, right where, out. Where's, where's the shop? Where's where the know? shop? Where you know? We can get you right in and right out. You Look, I, hey, I might do that for real. Uh, if I do that, I'm going to stream live because I'm going to be on Dr. Sugar's show today. Okay. And I was like, right, so she's talking to me about the Guinness World Record event. Dr. Sugar is going to be one of the speakers as well. We got 100 speakers. Um, now you're going to be participating now yes. on some level. Yes. What, what level do you want to participate on? We're going to do a little sponsorship. A sponsorship? It's a little sponsorship. Okay. I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's just a little sponsorship. <laughs> Quote, he, didn't, a little sponsorship. He, didn't, he didn't want me to get too excited. Yeah. He was like, we'll do a little sponsorship, a little sponsorship. Yeah. 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 Right, right. Yeah. That's yeah. the end of the month, the budget, you know, the year budget is gone. I, so, hey, you know. I got you, now, man. Now, next year, I can put you on the front end of the budget. Right. And, and we got you. Right, not yeah. a problem, not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, as a sponsor, mm -hmm. 
what are you spot what are we promoting as a sponsor tell us about your business um well what we just done um we've just started our uh, building our real estate team since i've seen you last yes um we've hired three new agents <clears throat> and what i'm doing is teaching the agents how to effectively market their warm market right because most people don't understand once you get your license that's one thing but mm -hmm. knowing how to build the business is another thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm building relationships with people like Miss Shirley, because they need to be here to know how to structure the business mm -hmm. from the beginning. So as they begin to scale and grow, they're already ready. Where I had to build my business the hard way from trial and error, I'm trying to avoid that for the people that are coming around me. And I'm digging for resources that I can give them to make their life easier to get to the next level even quicker. You know what? That's kind of what we were talking about a little bit yesterday, yeah. right? You know, I, I have a, uh, I have somebody I work with, and they always say, "Don't forget where you came from," and I, it's two sides to that, right? It's a don't forget where you came from to where I know you don't want to go back there, and you started something from nothing, so you work hard every day. Yes. I get that, but the other part of don't forget where you came from means to do exactly what you're doing to give back to the other people that you know that are struggling because you struggle too. To not get too big for your britches, not to be able to give a kind word to somebody or give a resource to somebody because sometimes one kind word and one resource can, can literally change the direction of your business to get you to that destination that much faster. So, you know, that's just one of the things that I like to keep in the forefront of our minds is that even though we're doing what, what we need to do to make money, um, a lot of people that are really working as hard as we're working love what we do and feel like we were put on this planet to do it. So we'll work hard at it all day, every day, and it doesn't seem like work to us. And that's when you become successful, just in my opinion. Right. So, so that's how I look at it. So, so out of all the different real estate agents that are out there, because it's a ton of them, right? How are you guys different? Because we bring a team to the table where we're just not signing contracts and selling countertops. Okay. Because since Hurricane Harvey, the labor force has really fell off. Mm. Because most people that work for the builder left the builder to go chase the insurance jobs. So mm. we have inspectors. Um, I was an appraiser in the past. I uh, had mortgage license. So we bring a different element to the real estate industry because we're just not selling you a home. We're gonna make sure that home is perfect as possible as it can be built with a man's hands. Mm. Um, every flaw, I mean, from the, the holes in the mortar on the outside of your house, you ain't paying that no attention. Right. Because in the window seals, because right. you're worrying about countertops and bathrooms. Right. You know, you're worrying about the kitchen and the party room. Right. So we're making sure. I mean, you gotta have a party. Yeah. Like you, you got so a party. Every phase of it, before the slab is pulled, I have an inspector that comes out and checks the plumbing in the slab mm -hmm. to make sure your plumbing is anchored right, to make sure it's secured, so you don't have any bellies in the pl in your plumbing once you close on the house. Right. Because once you close, that's your headache. Right. You know, the builder has so many warranties, but they're one year, two year, and ten years. Mm -hmm. What happens when those problems begin to arise because some issues was cut? So even before your sheetrock goes in, I have an inspector that comes in, a private inspector, that inspects the electrical, the plumbing, the HVAC, and the studs in the wall before we hang your sheetrock. Because once your sheetrocks are hung, you don't know what flaws are behind the, the walls. Right. So we got a house that we just closed on um, Monday. And it was a $330,000 house. Mm -hmm. I popped up one weekend just to look at the house. and. The laborers that put the windows in, eight inches on one side of the window had no nails in it. Twelve inches on the other side had no nails, neither across the top. But they put the tape around the window as if it was already nailed. So when I ran my hand around the windows before the brick went in, I felt there was no nails around the edge of that window. Right. So I had the homeowners to meet me there with the inspector. We peeled the tape back and found out of 15 windows, eight of them had no nails across the top of the windows. Mm. Now this is a new construction that you're paying $330,000, $340,000 for. Right. So in your mind, you at work, you leave home in this dog, you get home in this dog. Right. You assume the builder is doing everything he needs to do to make sure you're getting a quality product. That he's building it correctly. That he's building it correctly. Right. But if the builder's not concerned, 
The GC that's on the job is not concerned, and the labor force is not concerned. Who's working in your best interest? Right, and you don't know. And you don't know because you right. at work. Exactly. You like here's the thing. I'm telling you right here and right now. I'm a pretty smart dude, yeah. right? If I come to the place and I see the windows is up, I'm not checking for nails, dude. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not doing the braille touch. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, we're missing. Oh, we got one eight inches. We don't have another one. I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so the average person thinks that you are building everything up to code right. or the right way. Right or you would not be getting paid this right. money to build a house. But what we don't understand is, when you eat new construction, when you go to new construction, everybody that works for the builder works for the builder. Right. So nobody's working in your best interest. Right. So for you to go in there without a realtor, for you to go in there without a team, or without a private inspector, it's, it's a disservice to you. Right. Because nobody's working on your behalf. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, from a branding standpoint, you probably a real estate god right now, right? Because <laughs> look, when, when, you, when, you look at, when you look at going to buy a house and then you come in here with the fine tooth comb and the white gloves and say, you missed this, you missed that, you missed this, all of your clients are like, get them, get them. Oh, man, this dude, I'm telling you, this dude, he was counting the nails, I'm trying to tell you, right? I'm known by some of the builders as the realtor from hell. Oh, I know you are. Yeah. I know you they are. They frown on it. I have a video. I got a client who's going to buy an inventory home. Okay. It's been sitting on the market from since May. Uh, the builder said it was worth two sixty nine. We negotiated it down to two twenty nine. The first day on the house site, when I walked up to the house, I literally took a brick off the front of the house. Mm. A complete home. Ready to move, ready to close. You just snatched the brick out. I pulled it directly out the front of the house and put it back. I'm like, you look you look strong, but you don't look seen. like rock strong, like the rock, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Dwayne Johnson yeah. for y'all to you don't look like the rock strong that you just snatching bricks off of walls. Well, like, I'm like David Bama. I turn into the incredible Hulk. Is that what it is? Yeah, when I'm working for my client. Okay, and, all right. And you don't want to see me angry. Right, right. So, you won't so, like yeah, it when I'm yeah, angry. All right. Like but uh, now it's 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 just the quality of the work has went down. And right. um it's unfortunate because the the consumers are suffering. Right. And don't know they're suffering because mm -hmm. they believe these builders with certain names carry a certain quality of work, but it's not the builder, it's the labor force that the builder is struggling with. Because right now the builder's having a hard time holding on to sheetrock guys. They're right. having a hard time holding on to AC guys. They're having a hard time holding on to electricians because all of those guys left the builder who was paying them pennies to go work the Harvey jobs where they can charge the insurance companies a whole lot more money and make a lot more money. So I don't blame them for leaving, but they left the bottom of the barrel in the builder's hands. Right, got so, it. So that's what we're training these agents to see, so they can understand how to make sure their client is getting the best deal possible. If you want to get a brand new home and you want to make sure you got all your screws and nails, <laughs> if you can look into the camera and tell people how to contact you. You can look me up on LinkedIn at michaelkjoseph.com. You can find me on Facebook at the B-Spot Real Estate and Investments. You can find me on Instagram on the B-Spot Real Estate. Or you can go to my website, michaelkjoseph.com, or send me a call or text at 832-265-7791. That's 832-265-7791. Everybody give it up for Michael at the B-Spot. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. So I do know a couple of people here. I met this lady at uh, at the T minus event, and her and I we've been talking ever since. She just said that she is going to participate in the Guinness World Record event as well. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Faven. Now I'm just letting you guys know this is the first time I've seen Faven a bunch of times, but this is the first time I'm interviewing, and so we go go real kind to you, uh, Miss Faven. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Now this what you just brought here 
looks like uh, the little things that falls off the trees when you step it and you're crunching. <laughs> but that's not what this is. And um, no, this is um, uh, Ethiopian green coffee beans. Uh, green coffee beans. Yes. Right. Uh, before we, uh, before uh, coffee roasted, it looks like uh, this. Right. So before you roast the coffee, it comes in this form. Yes. Right. So the, the roast is what makes them the brown that we're used to buying and seeing. So because you're selling it this way, who do you sell your coffee to? Uh, we sell it right now, we're selling it to uh, roasters, coffee roasters, coffee shop, and uh, grocery stores. Grocery coffee stores. roasters and coffee shops. Yes. I actually, you ever heard of the drink station? Mm, no. I think, I think they're a roaster, I'm not sure, but I know they have a, a small coffee shop. They have a couple of different locations. Mm -hmm. They actually sponsored the coffee for my last Guinness World Record event because we stayed up 24 hours, so I needed coffee. Like, I'm not playing, I needed coffee. But, uh, so I may be able to connect you with okay. that guy. He's okay. out there in Pearland, and he has one location out in League City by me. So what, what makes your coffee different? What is <laughs> Where, where, where does it come from? Okay. Or is it hand picked? Are you counting how many? Because uh, we just had a dude that's counting the nails and the screws. <laughs> are you counting each bean? Like, what are we doing, David? Okay, uh, our coffee, uh, we have high quality coffee. We import it from Ethiopia. Okay. Uh, so, Ethiopian coffee is very special because uh, the weather of Ethiopia is very suitable for growing uh, coffee. Mm. Uh, and also, uh, a lot of, uh, most of co uh, Ethiopian coffee uh, grows in higher altitude. So the higher the altitude is, the, uh, the better the quality of the coffee is. Oh, why is that? Uh, Something with the atmosphere? Yes. Okay. That's what in the weather. And also, <clears throat> in Ethiopia, we don't use any uh, fertilizer or uh, irrigation system. Okay. So it's we only use natural rain. So it's organic. 95% of Ethiopia coffee is organic. So how, how do you know so much about Ethiopia coffee? Because um, my family are the one uh, they export coffee from Ethiopia. So They're it's in a Ethiopia owned right now. Yes. Got you. <laughs> it's a family-owned business. So, so it's it's a different. Like I, I need people to understand, it's a difference, right? Okay. If you go to H E B and you say this is Ethiopian coffee, you really don't know, dude, right? If you get your coffee from Faven, she says it's Ethiopian coffee. That's not an East Texas accent she got, right? <laughs> like her people are in Ethiopia and can call them and be like, "I got the package. Did you send it? Is this the package you sent? Yes. Is this true to to, uh, to the beans? Yes. Boom. There you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so uh, right now, uh, oh. We are new for uh, in the U.S., but uh, my, my family, they've been in the business for the last seven years. They've been exporting coffee to Europe, Middle East, and Far East. Mm. Uh, but we are new to the U.S. This is our first year. Uh, and we are in the process of getting roasted coffee. Uh, and once we uh, start, uh, we'll start next year, by the beginning of uh, January or February, we'll put in more grocery stores and small like one pound, two pound Absolutely. So you, you're going to be roasting your own coffee. Uh, first we'll work with the roaster and then we are planning to have their own coffee. Right. So next year you're going to be roasting your own yes. coffee. Yes. So I can, because I can't, it, because it's not, I can't do anything with this, right? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, in East Africa, uh, we usually, uh, we, we roast our own coffee uh, at home. We. We have our own Ethiopian traditional coffee ceremony. We we do coffee coffee different way. Uh, we get the green coffee, we wash it, and we roast it with a pan. We call it uh, maguia. Uh, yeah. So we roast it fresh at home, and then we grind it uh, by hand with mortar. We use wood mortar. We don't have any grinder back home when we don't have a grinder. We use it with mortar. Right. So. So can you show me how to do that? Yes, I'll come to your show and... Uh... I would love for you to do that, because I'm, I'm, if I learn how to do that, 
I would be asking <laughs> everybody, would you want some coffee and take the pan out and be out there doing the big... People be like, what? I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm finna hook you up in a minute. I'm about, about to get you the coffee. <laughs> and it's a whole experience, yes. all of that for a cup of coffee. And I like to act exhausted after like, oh, I gave you so much coffee. I gave you so much of my life in this one cup of coffee. You're welcome. You see what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. So if somebody's a roaster right now, okay. they want to follow you when you start roasting. Um, if they want to, you're going to be at the Guinness World Record yes. event as well. So yes. you're going to be a vendor there. Yes. If you could look into the camera and tell people how to contact you. Okay. Uh you, um, you can contact us at uh, www.yolicoffee.com uh, or you can email us at info at, yoli, uh, info at yolicoffee.com uh, yoli is y-o-l-i coffee.com and you can call us or text us at 8327847616 uh, our Facebook and Instagram page is yoli coffee uh, y-o-l-i coffee Right. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share something with you before you go, right? So my grandmother was one of the best cooks I've ever met in my life, right? And I used to love to eat my grandmother's cooking. And my grandmother got sick, right? And so as she was getting sick, and I was like, Granny, you getting old, you sick, you make the absolute best rolls in the world. Rolls, like bread rolls, right? And so she would braid them up and she would do all of these things and I would wake up in the morning feel, smelling fresh bread. And so it's a, it's a reason to this story. So she said, I'm gonna show you how to make the rolls. So my wife and I, we were making the rolls and we kneaded it and they had the rise and then we had to put the, the, uh, the dish towel over the bowl and let it rise. Then we had to come back and it was like 58 different parts of things that steps to this whole roll process. And I got to the point to where I was crying. <laughs> and my grandmother was like, what's wrong? I was like, Granny, these rolls are gonna die with you because I'm never making this again. <laughs> so I'm sitting here talking crazy like I want you to show me, but I'm probably not gonna go through <laughs> all of the steps. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Faith. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So. We have the number one mediator in the room right now that's about to come up to the stage. What is your name again, ma'am? Moya Jackson. Miss Moya Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Moya Jackson. <laughs> Moya is preparing her phone right now. For those that are in the room, you really don't have to stream off your phone. You can take the stream from Up Social Live and get all of this beautiful everything that we have and share it around. I almost wore my red shoes like Moya, so I'm glad I didn't because we would have been twinsies. Pick up the mic, Miss Moya, and let's get to talking. How are you today? I am very well. Thank you again for allowing me to have this opportunity with you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You were with us last time. Yes. We got 951 views last time. People was calling Shirley. Shirley called me and said, somebody sent me flowers because of this event. And you know what I told Shirley? Hmm. I said, send me my damn flowers. <laughs> like them flowers is Men for me. Like, like she, too. Right, I like flowers. He has a flowers, not real, y'all. Come but on. Nevertheless, Come it on. is a flower. Exactly, yes. exactly. I was like, send me my flowers. Cause <laughs> well, Trey and I smell. rocked it last time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so tell us what you do, Ms. Moya. Hello again out there in, in live land. Um, I am representing Dispute Resolution Center. I am the community outreach for Harris County's uh, only no cost mediation services mm. and we help people who can no longer uh, have that conversation a difficult conversation whether it be over family issues money slash consumer elder services business um, we help those people at no cost in and out of court with or without an attorney um, and all they need is a Harris County address yes mm. now do, let me ask you a question. You train the, you guys train the mediators, yes. right? So how do you train mediators if you got two people, you have somebody that's well-dressed, nice looking, and the other one looks shady? What do you mean by that? Right, the shady one, you already thinking they shady. Mm -hmm. 
So you saying when someone comes? I'm just out, playing. She's <laughs> like, she like. No, break it down. You know. I told I'm you I'm just, a talker. Right, 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 talk. right. Now the problem. Where you from? <laughs> What, okay, you already know the answer to that. Where where do you think I'm from? I don't have a West Texas accent as well, apparently. So where right, do you right. think I'm from? Because you already know. You ask a question. Are you a lawyer? You know, lawyers don't. They only ask questions. They know the answers to. So where where do you think I'm from? I don't think you're from Houston. Check. Okay, I think you might be from the Midwest somewhere. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Yeah, let's Midwest. We're gonna go with that. Man, this is this is a tricky Midwest, situation. Via, like I'm, via Mississippi River, via the swamps, via the New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, you are, you from New Orleans? Who that? Who that? Who that? Okay. Why? Okay. All right. All right. All My right. boss is gonna kill me. Right. 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 This is a business show. I just make it feel good, and obviously we feeling too good up in here. It's what that is. Um. So. 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 <laughs> Sure, Shirley just said, I've never seen Moya get that, but that relaxed. That's kind of what I do. That's kind of what I do. So when we look at mediation from a business standpoint, yes. let's paint the picture on what, you know, when people say that they have a problem, what problems do they really need to bring to mediation? We will literally do any case, as long as it's not criminal nor immigration, but we'll refer you to our partner agencies. But it can range, um, you and I were talking before we started broadcasting, we cap at 100,000. So okay. you can litigate with us up to that. We've mediated things as abstract as apologies, <laughs> believe it or not. I mean, you know, it, it, it really runs the gamut as long as it's not criminal, yeah. So I sound like, because you know I own a video production company, we can almost do a show around this whole thing. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, 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 you know what I mean? Right. Like, let's get it. So, so can you request a certain type of mediator or yes. is it like, so is it people that specialize in certain things? Like, so you have your apology uh, mediator that they just <laughs> specialize in getting apology. Come on, say it. You know you want to say, okay, I'm sorry. Like, so. <laughs> we, <yeah. laughs> right. Let's go back to, cause let's be specific. What Michael, his issue was, right? The nail man. The, the nail man. Right. Nitro. And if and if he says, do you have someone in your mediator pool who can speak specifically to real estate issues? Mm. We probably do, because we have over 200, <laughs> and some of them, we've been around since 1980, some of them, some people have been with us that long. Right. So we can specifically customize that mediation and again, a mediator will not help you. I got to be clear about that because a lot of people don't understand it. They're not your attorney, but attorneys are invited at your own um, cost. Um, but if you need someone in that room who understands the lingual and how things flow and, and how the, that terminology in that world, yes, please let us know ahead of time and we will try to get that for you. Okay. All right. Cool. So, man, if, if, if we have a situation where business partners, marriage partners, siblings, anybody you bumping heads with, you can help take care of that. Yes. All right. Yes. If you can look into the camera and tell people how to contact you. Please contact us. If you, you can, you don't need to call us uh, and, and you can call and ask questions, but you're like, hey, she is speaking to me. drchouston.org, drchouston.org. Number is 713-274-7100. Do not need to speak to me. I'm rarely there. I'm out hustling. I'm out letting people know we exist. 713-274-7100. Uh, Anyone in our office can help you. Um, we do speak Spanish. Um, hablamos um, español. I think I'm saying that right. We do speak Spanish. We, we're not speaking it right now. <laughs> like they, they speak it at the office is what that is. Like I just, I just wanted she, she was like, is that right? I, I don't like, know what that's right. Like. You, why are you from New Orleans? You doing speaking that? <laughs> right, right. And, and I, I could just quickly focus on this. Absolutely. We love prevention, preventive services. Our parent company, Houston Bar Association, HBA.org, they provide these free of cost uh, handbooks, legal handbooks, family law, elder law, and there's also a consumer law. Um, these go out the window quicker than hotcakes or whatever the saying is. Go to HBA.org. Okay. Public education, click on that. Legal handbooks. And there is, I mean, look how thin this is. You can read this in your private 
reading room, the, the bathroom. There, right. re it's really a quick, and this will help. This helps people stop them from coming to us because what you don't know will hurt you. Right. Okay. All right. Everybody, give it up for Miss Moyer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So you know, usually I talk, I talk a little bit about what I do from time to time. Um, and I usually talk about a product, but I'm going to put that on hold right now because I'm um, working on some other things. But for every business owner that's watching this and that's in this room, especially people that are building teams, sometimes you need to think about the health insurance. The health insurance when it comes to businesses, man, it literally kills a lot of businesses yes. because that health insurance, that expense is so high. I'd meet people all over the city, um, sometimes all over the United States, and I literally get resources for business owners, and I found something that I get you a lot of times better health insurance than what you have for 50 to 60 percent less than what you're paying. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal, so I just want to put that out there. That's something that I actually do is, is Really, I'm all about the plight for the business owner. And a lot of times, people don't know where to go. A lot of times, we look at health insurance as something that whatever somebody, the price they give us is what we have to spend. And you never think to shop around for health insurance. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the administration has done uh, since they've been in, regardless of how you feel about it, is that they've made the health insurance industry a competitive uh, place now. So you literally can shop around for health insurance. And I got me on, I've saved 63%. I got my wife and kids on the same deal. Um, and I've been helping business owners all over. So if you, especially if you have a team or whatever the case may be, and you wanna give them access to that, we've been talking to some of the people at Grace uh, Christian Academy, big shout out to Terrence. We're talking and taking care of those teachers. I don't care how big the group is or if you're a solo entrepreneur, you at least need to get a quote. And if you wanna get a quote, you need to text me at 832-317-8359. Again, that number is 832-317-8359. 8359. When you text me health insurance in your name, I'll have somebody call you back and they can get you a quote. And just to piggyback on what you just said, when I was in the finance industry, uh, I got my teeth cut in, in um, finance um, funding businesses when I would work for a nonprofit, um, which was Axion, Texas. And 90% of the people who came to see us had credit challenges, and those credit challenges started after they went into becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they did was let their insurance go because they thought they could take those dollars and put it back into their company. But the first thing that happens when you get sick, you can't afford to take care of yourself. Right. And then what happens is you're forced to go to an ER room, and then that ends up on your credit. And that became an 850 credit score within a year went down to a less than 500 credit score because of health insurance. Most of the credit entrepreneurs experience the bad credit of is due to absolutely not, no insurance. So I always tell a small business owner that's the first thing because you are the CEO, the CFO, the office manager, the 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 uh, salesperson, you are everything. And so you can't afford to get sick and not be able to take care of yourself. So Absolutely. great, great service that you're offering. And small business owners need to make sure that they're covered and their families are covered. And so I'm just gonna add one other thing. That's part of what Up Social is all about. We're a networking group. And because we have this location, we have other locations throughout Houston. So you can visit any of our locations. But these other people that are in those locations you want to network with and come 2020, that's why we're doing something a little bit different. We're literally setting up a concierge service for UpSocial. Now this concierge service is going to work two ways. One, I don't know if y'all saw that light come on. That's like, that's the, I'm hot right now, I'm hot is what I'm trying to tell you. 
One, the way that it's going to work as a concierge service is going to make your life easier. So they're going to call you and make sure that they have all your information, know when your wife's birthday is, anniversaries, all of that, if you got pets, whatever the case may be. And they're going to uh, make sure that they plug you with some people from the up social network first. So, and they're gonna do the same thing for you. So if you own a floral shop and everybody that's in the Houston area, they're saying, hey, uh, you know, one thing to do for anniversary is to give flowers. Our up social network florist is this person, right? And then they'll start looking at it from a, a standpoint of who's closest to you. So if we only have one, then they're going to be putting you out there. The other thing that they're going to do and literally call you twice a month, the other thing that they're going to do is look for referral partners. So as we get bigger and bigger, the more people we have, every couple of times, a couple of times a month, they're going to call and say, who can you get referrals from? So as we get those people in up social network, they can link you to a referral partner as well. And there's a whole nother entity to it, but that's one of the hottest things. So when you accompany this way of marketing, of networking in the room and live streaming, when you accompany that with some of the big events that we're doing with Guinness World Record to put you on the biggest stages as possible, make some of the biggest networking connections as possible, and we sow into business along with that part of it to intimately get you to, to meet with other people and put you out there in the forefront while they analyze what you need to make your life easier at the same time, there's no, not going to be any networking group that's hotter than up social network. I promise you that. Now, is there anything you want to say before you go? Any small business owner existing, but in 2020, you're looking to go to a new level, add another platform to your business. Um, if you're a business coach, if please join us in January for uh, First Wednesday Women's Networking. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an opportunity for you to get the word out about what it is that you do that is so important to small businesses to be able to go to that next level. This platform is for you. Please meet us here next month, first Wednesday, uh, as we kick off 2020. Now, I want to say one last thing. It's not just for women. It's even for the manliest man. The man that sat here snatched the brick out the wall. You see what I'm saying? You can't get more manly than that. Big shout out to B-Spot, right? Oh, New Year's Day is yeah, it's uh, the is. First Wednesday, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So we. So it's the. We're going to. What you want to do? Go to our website. We will be discussing when our. We're probably going to do it on a different day, uh, but we will do it in the month of January, just because we want to use January as a launch path for new beginnings, new heights new stratosphere and, so, and breaking records and breaking records so we'll do it another um probably the next wednesday the following wednesday which is probably the eighth mm -hmm. yep okay so we will do it the, january 8th uh, but just go to our website and register remember the website www.wbea-texas.org and the new date for january will be on on the uh, on the website all right all right, cool. Is that all you want to say? Yes. <laughs> all right, cool. Hey, this is Nolan Davis, and this is? Shirley Brooks. Hey, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Up Social. If you have not registered for the event, if you want to be a sponsor, a vendor, a speaker, if you want to be an attendee, if you just want to stand outside and be some parking lot pimping, that, that's some, something from Chicago. No. If you just want, I'm just no. saying, if no. it, whatever you want to do, whatever no. you want to do for the Guinness no. World Record event, you go to recordbreakers2020.com. That's recordbreakers2020.com. Get set up and I'll see you there. Until next time, love to 